Portland, Oregon. Peter Derns, in his 30s, is in a session with his therapist. He finally feels ready to see his wife, Sharon, from whom he had to separate due to her unhealthy bouts of jealousy. However, the therapist advises him to take a little more time. Then, Peter goes to a work meeting. He is the marketing director at Appleby, an industrial cookie manufacturer. The company's director is Charlene Town, and her vice president is Roger Jasser. During the meeting, Peter proposes launching a vintage-style cookie box, reminiscent of the 1950s. His plan involves selling it at a loss just to introduce the product. The other executives, including Jack Hartzell and Sarah Meinhold, have mixed feelings. Another executive from New York, representing Bart Foods, a company about to take over Appleby, strongly disapproves of this idea. But director Charlene supports Peter's project and encourages him to proceed. Peter needs to write a detailed report for the next day, but he can't rely on his secretary Lance, who has to be absent for family reasons. Fortunately, the next day when he arrives at the office, he finds a charming young intern there, Chris Bolin. She immediately gets to work skillfully, allowing Peter to prepare his report on time. While she's working on the computer, Peter sneaks a glance at her cleavage. She notices but isn't offended. Later, during an outdoor company meal, Chris shines again by helping Jack Hartzell get rid of a hornet. Jack had panicked at the sight of the insect because he is allergic to its venom and a single sting could be fatal to him. In the following days, Chris, who has gained Peter's trust, offers to handle all his files, even managing his personal expenses. Chris claims to have a husband and a three-year-old daughter, as evidenced by a photo of a man and a child on her desk. One evening, as they are the last ones in the office, Chris, who has the knack for being very alluring, proposes some very interesting ideas for Peter's marketing project, including producing heart-shaped cookies. Peter is captivated by Chris's charm, but restrains himself and compliments her on her ideas. Chris quickly grasps that Peter is separated from his wife. The next morning, Peter arrives at the office to find his colleague Jack flirting with Chris. He feels a bit jealous, but Chris explains that she must look for another position after her temporary assignment ends. On the day of Lance's return, the regular secretary, Chris gets ready to leave, but a horrible accident befalls poor Lance. His hand gets caught in the paper shredder. Chris can thus extend her assignment with Peter. Chris overhears a phone conversation between Peter and his therapist, learning about the behavioral issues Peter has dealt with. At noon, Peter has lunch with Charlene, who expresses her delight about the heart-shaped cookie idea. Peter discovers that Chris had mentioned it to Charlene, but hadn't taken credit for it herself. Furthermore, Chris is a graduate from the prestigious Stanford University, but modestly accepted a temporary position. Back at the office, Peter is intrigued by Chris's behavior, but can't delve into the matter with her, as Chris steers the conversation elsewhere. During a tasting session for the new cookies, all the executives including Chris are present. Chris is the only one to criticize the recipe, suggesting real molasses instead of the more expensive molasses-flavored additive. Both Charlene and Roger agree with her, compelling the pastry chef to alter the recipe. Peter continues to be increasingly surprised by Chris's assertiveness. One Sunday morning, Peter is gardening when he is surprised by a visit from his wife Sharon, who expresses her desire to reconnect. Peter suggests having dinner together the following week. The next day, stuck in traffic, Peter notices his colleague Jack's car parked haphazardly on the roadside. He stops and inspects the vehicle, only to discover that Jack has died from a hornet sting. Back at the office, Peter is still shaken, but Chris helps him relax by giving him a shoulder massage. One morning, Peter arrives at the office to find his friend Brad Monroe waiting for him. The situation is awkward because Brad works at Bakery Mills, a competing company, and he was looking at a confidential document on Peter's desk. That evening, Chris notices that Peter has displayed a photo in his office, showing him with his wife Sharon. Chris seems troubled by Peter's renewed closeness with his wife and decides to invite him for a drink after work. After some hesitation, Peter agrees. In the bar, he shares his jealousy stories with Chris. Later, he asks Chris about her own marriage. Chris responds evasively, hinting at her unhappiness. She tries to tempt him again, but he resists. As they leave the bar, Chris gestures toward a kiss, leading Sharon, who happens to be sitting in the restaurant next door, to think they kissed. After Chris departs, Peter realizes Sharon saw them, leading to a new argument between him and his wife. Furthermore, Sharon reveals that Chris used their joint bank account to buy a watch. The next day, there's another argument at the office, this time between Peter and Chris. Chris claims she only borrowed his card for an impulsive purchase and shows him the check she had prepared to repay him. Peter accepts the apologies but contemplates parting ways with Chris. 
A few days later, while they are walking in a park, Peter begins to tell Chris that their professional paths must part ways. Before he can finish, Chris kisses him in gratitude, revealing she's already aware as she has been promoted to marketing director. Peter is shocked. He had taken Jack's position after his death, but he didn't expect Chris's advancement to be so swift. He complains about it later to the vice director Roger and his colleague Sarah. That same evening, Chris visits him in his office to give him a gift, an ivory-handled letter opener. A few days later, when the cookies are presented to the public for the first time in a supermarket, a dreadful accident occurs. The biscuits are inedible because someone sabotaged their production. Charlene immediately convenes her executives and devises a counter-strategy. She calls for an internal investigation and assigns Chris to speak on TV, explaining that the company will thoroughly investigate the incident. Peter begins to suspect that Chris is behind this series of accidents, and he discusses it again with Vice Director Roger, but Roger suggests that the suspect might be his friend Brad Monroe, an employee from the rival company Baker Mills. During an outdoor company day near Battleground State Park in Washington State, a few peculiar incidents occur. During a game, Peter is dragged into the mud, and Chris mocks him. Afterwards, Peter decides to relax by floating on a buoy offshore, but Chris swims out to him and tries to seduce him with very suggestive talk, mentioning making love in the water. A few days later, while still at the office late at night, Peter finds Roger, who has hanged himself. Apparently as a result of the cookie accident, the company's stock had lost several points. After Roger's funeral, Peter is given new responsibilities by Charlene because the company must keep running. But Chris also has new responsibilities. The same evening, while Peter goes to get his car from the company garage, Chris appears behind the wheel of her car and pretends to want to run him over. But it's just a joke. She stops at the last moment and tells Peter that the two of them will always remain friends before hitting the ground running again. The next day, Peter calls the temp office that sent Chris. He obtains the address of her previous employer and goes there to carry out his little investigation. He discovers that Chris's former boss died suddenly and that Chris had been jealous of the promotion he gave to an intern. While carrying out his investigation, Peter forgets to go to his son Nathan's basketball game. However, he gets there very late and takes the opportunity to speak with Sharon about his suspicions. His wife replies that he is exaggerating and advises him to make an appointment with the psychologist. Peter leaves angry, but leaving the basketball palace, he sees Chris and his friend Brad Monroe sitting at a bar. He thinks of a connection between the two and realizes that it would explain a lot. In the evening, he goes to Chris's home to see the reality of her marriage. He enters the property and realizes that Chris lives alone. Attracted by moans, he looks into the bedroom window and sees her masturbating, but he is surprised by someone from the neighborhood and has to burrow away. The next day, Charlene gathers all the company executives for a crisis meeting. There has been industrial espionage. The rival company, Baker Mills, launched a product similar to Applebee's cookies a week earlier. After the meeting, Peter invites Chris and her family for dinner at his home, but she declines. When Peter insists, Chris says her husband has just left her, taking the child. Chris always seems to have a ready answer. The next day, Sarah shares the results of her own investigation into Chris with Peter. According to her, Chris Bolin never attended Stanford University as she is not listed in the alumni records. Peter doesn't have time to delve deeper because as he heads to his office, everyone looks at him strangely. In his office, Charlene and a company IT specialist are waiting, having found a confidential document on his computer. Charlene then asks Peter to leave the company and wait for her decision. Highly stressed, Peter goes to Chris's office and attempts to physically assault her, before colleagues come to restrain him. That evening, in a bar with Brad, Peter drinks more than he should and gets thrown out. Later, amidst garbage bags, he also quarrels with Brad. Peter wakes up the next day, still fully dressed and hungover. Fortunately, Charlene calls to apologize and ask him to return to work. The confidential document had been sent to him in error by the r &D department. Chris discovered the mistake and reported it. She completely cleared Peter. Back at the office, Peter is promoted to vice director, taking Roger's place, and he learns that Sarah has been transferred because she was snooping too much in her colleagues' offices. Everything seems to be going well now. Charlene proposes a mission for Peter and Chris to inspect the cookie manufacturing factory in Salem. Peter goes on the trip with Chris, but while driving on the highway, the brakes fail to respond. After 
risking their lives several times, Peter manages to stop the vehicle and realizes the brakes had been sabotaged. That evening at the hotel, Peter asks Chris why she lied about Stanford. She admits she was forced to do it to find a good job. Then she reminds Peter of what she has done for him. She seems to want to seduce him again, but Peter remains cold. A bit later during the night, Peter receives a call in his room. The hotel reception informs him of a message left by Charlene about an alert at the cookie factory, and she's already on site. Peter has to go there too. So, he takes a taxi and arrives at the factory in the middle of the night. As he enters the dimly lit facility, he finds the sight guard on the floor, stabbed with the ivory-handled letter opener Chris had given him. Further inside, he sees Chris lying on the ground but only stunned. Peter believes Charlene is responsible and searches for her, but he gets hit on the head and briefly loses consciousness. When he regains his senses, he sees Charlene and Chris struggling on a metal bridge high above the factory. Charlene seems to be winning the fight and, armed with a metal pipe, makes a motion to strike Peter when he tries to approach her in the darkness, but Peter pushes her beyond the railing. Before falling, Charlene utters a final word, the photos. Then she plummets about 10 meters and dies almost immediately. Months later, Peter is rebuilding his relationship with his wife Sharon and their son, and has been made president of the company. As he settles into Charlene's former office, he discovers several identical framed photos left behind of Chris's husband and daughter. He is shocked when Charlene's secretary, Rosemary, explains that the picture frames were a cheap gift from her to Charlene, and that the pictures in them are stock photos the frames came with. Recalling Charlene's final words, Peter realizes that she too had detected Chris's duplicity. Peter confronts Chris about the photo and accuses her of orchestrating the bakery incident to kill Charlene, and possibly himself. Chris again tries to assuage him, explaining that she presented the photo as her husband and daughter, as a means of discouraging male co-workers from hitting on her. Peter, finally realizing that Chris is a master manipulator and sociopath, knows he cannot prove her culpability in any of the events. To rid himself of Chris once and for all, Peter simply fires her and orders her detained until the police can escort her out. I hope you enjoyed this recap of the 1993 psychological thriller The Temp. If you'd like to see more high-quality recaps like this one, just stick around and we will see each other in the next video.